Real Estate Monday conversation. Mike Tran joins us. Uh, real estate specialist with John L. Scott, who's really heavily invested in helping clients with new home and construction needs. How you doing, Mike? Doing well, thank you. Good. It's good to good to see you. You made it. Made it. A little late, but that's all right. It's traffic. <laughs> I can see it from here. Um, well, Mike, you know that when people are out there looking at houses, you can't always get the perfect house when you're looking for other people's houses to purchase from them. No. Nope. But when you start looking at new construction, some of those features and benefits I talked at the very talked about at the very top of the hour start to be able to, you know, you kind of get to mold your own clay, for lack of a better term, uh, when you do build your own home. Yeah, I think there was a uh, great article, I think it was like back in the, I think, 80s, early 80s. They said there I don't is remember, no perfect. I, I don't remember that one, Mike. There's no perfect home. <laughs> it, was, it was interesting, this article, because uh, we were building uh, custom homes, and they were saying that the for a perfect home, it was during that time was like $10 million to build. And after they built it for him, he was still not happy with the home. So there is no perfect home. I so mean, really. So what becomes... <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I was excited. I thought you were going to tell me how to get my perfect home, Mike. Um, so when you get into this new construction that goes on, you know, what should people be looking for? I mean, is it kind of that same idea, same thought? I mean, really, same thought, but really what you're more looking at to see what is your lifestyle. How many bedrooms? How are you going to use your home? You know, uh, the garage, are you going to actually store cars or are you going to actually use it as a storage place? Are you going to have a boat? These are some of the things I think it really helps with new construction so you can make those decisions ahead of time. And where the biggest benefit with new construction is that um, you kind of, you know, if you get it early enough, you can get the builders to kind of cater a little bit to your needs and how you want it, to, uh, how your lifestyle looks like. Just kind of finish it up. You, you yeah. get to finish the house the way you want to. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Are there a lot of new construction projects going on around town right now? I mean, we've heard in some areas, yes, in some areas, no. What's your take on that? It, it very varies. What happened is that there is such a shortage of home right now, right? And this is why you see a multiple offers on especially first-time home buyer homes. But the reason is there was not a lot of permit that was pulled out. Uh, before because after the crash, banks was not loaning uh, to the builders money to for spec levels, and they were actually going out and getting hard money for most cases. And so there's not a lot of Which is expensive. It's very expensive. And what happened was now you can start seeing more new constructions happening because there is a demand for it because there's not a lot of inventory. And so when you put so th that demand, it just kind of takes time, I guess, to. Put bill. <laughs> yeah, it does take time. It, depending where the city, the jurisdiction is at, it takes a while for them to get the permit, uh, get the lot platted, get to find the land. The closer you are into the city, the harder it is because there's not a lot of land. And most some of the builders actually have a lot of cash. They don't want to do, you know, three or four homes. They want to do 30 or 50 or 100 homes at a time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it's hard for them to find land and able to do that. So you find a lot more small. If you're closer to the city, you find a little, a little more, more smaller project with you know smaller um, builders. So when you start looking at the houses that are being built, either they're near the city or outside, I guess are they are they more ideal for first time home buyers? Is there a, is or is it for move up buyers, move down buyers, investment? I mean, what what tends to be the the people looking at uh, at new construction? I think right now, I think the builders are being a lot more smarter uh, with their financial especially investors, and so they're building smaller homes uh, closer in the city, and more importantly, they're building a lot more affordable homes, right? Um, because first-time home buyers out there, they're, that's what they can afford, and they realize, you know, maybe I don't need a five hundred or six hundred or $800,000 mortgage. Maybe I can, you know, I can live on with a I can less. live in 2,400 square feet. <laughs> yeah, instead of 5,000 square foot Sure, home, right? the right? McMansions. <laughs> yeah. So when you when you find buyers and you want to help them purchase a home, what what do you what do people really need to know? What do you see as some of the biggest the biggest I, I don't know unturned rocks or whatnot that that uh, that first that home buyers in general are not asking? What questions aren't they? Asking? You know, for for the biggest thing for me when I work with somebody who's buying a new construction home, I would you know stir away from a lot of upgrades, just because I wanted to kind of find out the builders are they going to be around? Number one, number two. Are they going to have or be around to guarantee my war warranty that first year? And how much upgrade are we doing, planning to do in that plaid versus the average Joe? 
Because let's say if you're in a plaid and you want nicer stuff in your home and you add $100,000 in upgrading that house and the, your neighbor right down the street has the same house, same builder, same built, same square footage, and he didn't do any upgrade. What's going to happen? Well, when you go, both sell the home, you're not going to get your $100,000 out that you put in there. And then you have, you know, the mortgage guys have an issue. They're like, how do I justify to the lender that this house costs a hundred thousand dollars more for the exact same thing. So yeah, I mean, because some- from an appraisal standpoint, you know, it doesn't matter if you have brushed nickel door handles versus you nope. know the good old nope. I don't know what's the what are the crappy ones <laughs> brass brass. <laughs> <laughs> So that's that's you know it, you know if you look at a home you know let's say your home has when did brass go bad by the way yeah like we're in the eighties brass was cool brass on on exposed wood it, it looks old man <laughs> yeah so you know I think you know like having hardwood how much hardwood none of those really comes into play as much as when you're you know uh, at, um, appraising the house for the lender's eye I mean it does play very 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 little. So, you know, to have that added on there, sometimes it's, it's, it's kind of hard for the buyer. So typically I, I say, okay, what are you looking for a home? And what are some of the things you must have versus some of the things you want to have, right, in the many the Because house. there's no perfect home. There is not. <laughs> perfect Even home. for $10 million bucks. Back in the 80s. That's a lot of money. Think about it. <laughs> it was a lot of money. It is a lot of money now, yeah. Mike. Uh, we're here with Mike Tran, real estate broker, John L. Scott, uh, talking a little bit here about New construction and the needs of buyers. Is, is there trends that builders are going towards to, to meet those needs and meet the demand? Yeah, I think the biggest trend right now is just making things compact and more uh, contemporary feel. Um, you know, making, uh, utilizing a lot more space. You Like before, there was a lot of waste of space uh, around in the house. Now they're actually utilizing every single square inch of that. Um, you know, using better materials, uh, so keep the cost down and more. I think they're more aware of the typical buyers, especially you know, closer to the city. What they'll find is that, you know, people are having not they don't have five or six kids like they used to be, right? It's like one kid or two kids. So, and so one of them typically works at home, or they don't tell they telecommute, right? At least one or two twice a, a week they work at home. So they'll end up making it more and instead of a. Um, extra bedroom they'll just turn it into a more of a den or office for them and so they're catering to more of that um and the microsoft people (laughs) they're uh the generation x and y i guess there you go i I love it well mike thanks so much for joining us we do have to go to break stick around for a little bit uh we're going to get everybody's thoughts uh on the real estate market including don rushton mike tran ryan leopold and myself we'll be right back after this break (laughs) 